And that's okay. They're still going to be accepted into our union. They're still members of our union. They're still family members of ours. However, it's our duty to tell them the truth. And, and what I would say is also is what I've been telling my union brothers and sisters is, look, I was at the convention in Chicago and I've been to other conventions. Um, there has never been a more pro-union presence in any convention that I've been to than I saw at the DNC convention in Chicago. Over 20 percent of the delegates to the Democratic National Convention were car carrying union members that carried themselves as union members. You cannot say the same for the Republican Party. I could tell you there was probably less than 2% or less than 1% of the people at the Republican National Convention that would call themselves union members. Simply put, and we have to work within the Democratic Party at this point in order to win the gains for our membership that we need to win. Now, if the Republican Party somehow someday wakes up and says, listen, we want to support things like the PRO Act. We want to support things like the expansion of Davis-Bacon. We want to support things like registered apprenticeship programs. We're all ears. I'll talk to anybody. I don't care what party you come from about the issues that affect my members. However, they haven't done that. Yeah, I mean, as long as you're sincere, and I don't believe these overtures and haven't believed them for the last couple of years are actually sincere because the votes aren't there. And as you pointed out, to save the multi-employer pension fund, the vice president, Kamala Harris, had to cast the de- deciding vote, which meant there was not one Republican who voted for it. No. And when the PRO Act was put up before the House twice, there was only five Republicans that voted in passage of the PRO Act. It was because it was a safe vote. And believe me, they have targets on their back from the extreme right because they want to get that number down to zero. 